Hi guys, and welcome back to Creative Glam. And if you're new, my name is Sharon. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my countdown to my top 20 DIYs for 2020. The best of the best. Now let's jump into number 20. I'm going to share with you a modern farmhouse blanket ladder that's super simple, super easy, and budget friendly. If you don't already have one in your home, I hope that this video can spark some inspiration for you to create one for your home. So let's get started on this blanket ladder. I went over to Lowe's and I picked up some lumber. It was a one by three and I had them cut it for me. I have them cut it down to two four foot pieces and five 12 inch pieces. And the great thing about it is that portion is already done and it cost only $10 using my Verithane wood stain in the color Kona. It's the same color that I used when I refreshed my kitchen dining table. I love the color. So I, so, since I've already got this color in my home, I thought I'd cross pollinate my decor by adding it to the blanket ladder. The inspiration for this project came from the fact that because the weather is starting to get cooler again, so I know that we'll be using the blankets quite a bit. And I wanted some place to keep them other than just always on my chair. I tend to keep my, my blankets just uh, folded up on the chair, you know, thrown over the sofa. And sometimes I'd like to move them out of the way. So this year I will have access to them, but they will have a place. They will have a designated space other than the chair, other than the sofa. And I like that idea. I enjoyed making this project so much that I am going to make a second one for uh, my bedroom. And I hope that you all give it a try as well. I believe that is it. I will let this dry for about three hours and then I'll come back and put it together. Okay guys, it's the next day and the wood stain has completely dried. And the items that I need to complete this project will be some rubber gloves. The rubber gloves are optional because like I said, I let it dry overnight so it is really dry, but I still may use them. A pencil for marking, a measuring tape, decorative nail heads, some furniture protectors, some wood glue, and a drill. Oh yeah, and you'll also need a block of wood uh, to protect your surface when you're drilling nails. I will be putting a nail in each rung on the back side. And my glue gun. I will also be using this because I want to add a couple drops of hot glue on top of the wood glue so that it'll give me a quicker bond because as I said I have to flip it over. I'm going to flip it over and add some screws on the back for added support. So again, this is optional. If you want to just use wood glue and clamps, that's you know that's an idea. But I did want to put uh, nail. I uh, did want to put screws on the back. I've decided that I want my slats to overlap across, as opposed to being inside each piece. I want them to overlap. Um, I don't know. I just like the look better, and it's also easier to do. So, and I also decided, and I also decided that I am going to use four, what are these? Rungs, slats, um, cross wood beams. I don't know what you call, I don't know the correct term for this part of the ladder, but I've decided to use four of them as opposed to five. So I do have an extra one here. I decided I needed about six inches in between each piece of, uh, in between each slat. Because I measured my blankets and when they were folded up, that's about what worked for me. That works. I like the way that looks. Now you also want to make sure the long one's going this way. You need to make sure that these are even. You don't want to start gluing and uh, nailing these together and the main structure piece is off. Otherwise you'll end up with a wonky ladder. And I almost did that. That's why... It was just a, a reminder. Make sure these two pieces are even. I am going to put on gloves because I am messy when it comes to glue.
The wood glue is dry and I have flipped it over. Now I'm going to add a screw in the back for just additional support. And here I'm just adding the Velcro pads to the back to protect the wall. I'll be right back. I'm going to take these nail heads outside and cut the nails down halfway so I don't have to go as far into the wood. That gives me more control and able to place the nail head exactly where I want it to be in each corner. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the nail heads cut and I've got them placed where I want them to be. I truly enjoyed doing this project. It was super easy and it was super fun and it only cost $10. If you like the way my modern farmhouse blanket ladder turned out, leave me a comment. I'd also appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up. If you like high-end decor and DIYs on a budget, hauls, clean with me, and basically all things home, Hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell and then click all so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. This video is in conjunction with a collaboration called Top 20 DIYs for 2020 and is being hosted by Heidi of Heidi Sambal DIYs and Leonette of DIY Beauty on Purpose. I will link both of their channels down below in the description box along with the playlist of all the other content creators participating in today's collaboration. Our goal is to provide you with non-stop DIY motivation. So these are going to be DIYs from all seasons throughout the year. So once you finish watching my video, look down in my description box and follow that link to the other content creators participating today. Now let's jump into the next DIY in the countdown. And today I'm going to share with you an infinity wreath. I have my floral rings painted. And just a quick reminder, the largest one is 16 inches. The next one down is 12 inches. And the smallest one is 6 inches. I would have preferred maybe a 9 inch one, but they didn't have it. So I'm going to make do with what they have and now I have. I think that's it. I think I like that setup. I think that'll work for me because it gives me the space to put the flowers and the greenery around the bottom, but still allows you to see the other rings. So let's put this together. As I said earlier, I'm just gonna use floral wire to make this happen. Now something that I didn't take into consideration is that this wire is green, a dark green, and I painted the uh, rings a light gray. Um, so that's something you might want to keep in mind too. I, I didn't see any silver floral wire, but um, I probably could have maybe touched this up. But I'm going to try my best to cover this part here with some greenery. So just be mindful where you place it so you can cover it. Now you can use floral wire or you can use hot glue. Um, I had, um, in my intentions is to use floral wire uh, as opposed to hot glue, 
because even though hot glue is temporary and I can remove it, it makes more of a mess than it with the floral wire. I'm gonna add, like to add maybe some pumpkins. can be modern, it can be farmhouse, it can be glam. You can dress it up or dress it down. You can move the rings around to make it look like a Venn diagram of any sorts. So I love home decor that is versatile, that allows me to switch it up and change it around based on my mood in the season that I'm decorating for. I love making wreaths. Of those succulent pot. So I have a last minute change of plans. I decided I want to use my white rocks in here. I just think that would be so pretty. I think it would really pop that white in that turquoise or teal. I call it turquoise. <laughs> so I'm going to add the rocks in here. I believe I got these rocks at, um, I don't know where I got these rocks. I either got them at uh, Joanne Crafts or Michaels. So I'll just take them off the stem to get the size that I want. And then nestle them down into the rocks. And I'm gonna leave the stem on this one here. And I love this because it, it goes from red to orange to a variegated green. And I thought it picked up in the center of those so well. I thought that was so pretty. I want it a little more in the front. I want it spilling right across the top there. I decided that I would create my own tic-tac-toe board for my family to use outside on the deck. I went to Hobby Lobby and I purchased a large mirror and I already had the washi tape. I purchased some X's and O's. They were, hmm, I think they were a dollar. They were $1.99 each and at the time they were having a 50% off sale. So there's a pack of two. So I guess about 50 cents a letter. So let's get started on this tic-tac-toe DIY. I'm gonna use my washi tape to create my grid lines for the tic-tac-toe board. I would have used white, but I didn't have any white and I thought this silver was really pretty. So I'm gonna go with this, but you can use whatever color washi tape you like. You can even paint the lines if you like, but I have so much washi tape, I figured I might as well use them. Actually, this is 13. It's 13 by 13. I thought it was 12 by 12. So, in tic-tac-toe, there's nine squares. 
So I'm going to have to do two lines this way and two lines this way. And then you have to leave room for the amount of washi tape. My washi tape is approximately a half inch wide. I think that's good. Okay, and we'll do the same thing in the other direction. This guide is a part of my Tim Holtz glass cutting board. It has a little lip on there and it helps you to, uh, to guide you when you're making cuts. So it's really helping me out quite a bit on here. I, I like that, it makes a difference. I decided to go with the white because, um, I don't know. I just like the way the white letters look better. But you can make your letters whatever color you want. You can even spray paint these to whatever your decor is if you wanna change the colors. Uh, but I had intended on using a white grid line, but I didn't have white washi tape. So that's why I went with the silver washi tape. Um, so that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to do white, and then I decided to do white and silver. But whatever your decor colors are, you can really tailor this, this uh, project to your liking. I like that. This DIY is super easy and super cute and super fun for the whole family. Today, I'm DIY a standalone laundry room shelf. You don't want to miss it. The inspiration for this shelf came from Pinterest. I was looking to put a second shelf in my laundry room over the washer and dryer, but I knew that I needed to do it on a budget and my go-to stores are still closed due to the quarantine. It can be used for it over the washer and dryer shelf or it can be used for the back of a sofa. It just all depends upon how tall you make the legs. So I decided that that would be the perfect shelf that I would need in my laundry room. My husband and I went over to Home Depot to pick up the items that we needed to make this small makeover on a budget. I picked up a white floating shelf from Home Depot along with some wooden dowels that were covered in white laminate. I picked up some brackets and I picked up some double-sided screws. And I'm going to use these items to create a shelf that will stand over my washer and dryer. So let's get started. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so now I've got all four legs to the laundry room shelf cut. Now I'm going to add a double end screw to the tip of each leg so that I can screw them into the bracket.
Okay, now I've got all four double-sided screws in the tops of the legs. Now I'm gonna add the brackets. I'm gonna mark where I pre-drill the holes to add the brackets. Okay guys, we're almost done. I got the brackets on the bottom of the shelf. Now we're gonna add the legs. And now I'm going to add the E6000 to the molding that I'm that I'm going to add to the front of the shelf. Now I'm gonna use my small cloche along with some items that I picked up from the Target Dollar Spot to create a winter scene inside of this cloche. I've also created some winter scenes in my large cloche. If you haven't seen those videos, I'm gonna link them up above in the cards. I'm gonna use the Epsom salt for two purposes. One is to give me that snow effect and it's also to level out the bottom of this cloche. And then I also have some of the glittery snow that I got from the Dollar Tree. I love it because it has that iridescent, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I'm just gonna add some of that to the top. And then I'm gonna take this, um, Lamp post. This lamp post is a part of a Christmas village that I did a few years back. So I'm going to take that and add it to the other side of the house here. And now I'm going to add some twinkle lights on the inside of the cloche. I was on Amazon and I was searching for storage and organizational products that I could use for my pantry. So I'm going to share with you the unboxing of those items that I purchased from Amazon. So let's get started with this much needed pantry organization.
So these are the stackable trays that I got for the pantry. So I've got two different sizes here. I wanted to keep them clear because I need to be able to see. Because often I stand in my, my pantry and make my grocery lists. So I need to be able to see quickly what I have, what I don't have, what I need refills of, even though I have a running uh, a list of things that I need to pick up, I still like to be able to pop open the pantry and see right away what I need. So that's why I wanted to keep, uh, that's why I'm going to keep it clear. This is my airtight food storage containers. It is the seven piece that I will be using today as well. For those cereals and pastas and things like that that need a, a longer shelf time. These are perfect for that. And then this is the can dispenser. I don't drink a lot of sodas and soda cans, but I thought that this would be perfect for canned goods. I don't even really have a lot of canned goods, but I do have some. I try and keep some in the pantry, and uh, I try and rotate them to keep them as fresh as possible. Um, so I'm instead of using them for soda cans, I'm going to use them for canned goods. This holds how many? I think it said, this is what? I don't know how many it's supposed to hold. I think it's 12. I think it's supposed to hold 12 cans, and I got two of them. So, that's about right for me. It gives me a, a, a place to store the canned goods without having them all over the place, and it makes it a little easier for me to make sure I use whatever is uh, first in, first out, to try and keep them as fresh as possible. I offload the pantry, put everything on the kitchen table, and I put them in the order of how I took them out, per she by shelf. I took everything out of the pantry and purged the items that had expired and that I no longer need. I then cleaned the shelves of the pantry, swept, and mopped. Okay, so I unboxed all my Amazon storage and organization containers. I washed them, dried them. I now have my containers inside the pantry and I'm ready to put my items back. My containers came with labels, but I'm hesitant to use them because the items that I currently have in any given container can change. So I'm not sure what to do. What do you all think? If anyone knows, let me know how you do it in your pantry. Leave me a comment. Okay, now I've got everything back into the pantry and I am loving the way it looks. It took a while. It took me a few hours to get this project done, but it was so needed and I am so pleased with the way that it turned out. I still need to get a container for all of my chips. Well, actually, I saw one at Home Depot and I will run over and pick that up because the container that I had was too small and I did not want one that was uh, I couldn't see through. So I am very pleased with the way that this turned out. I like the way that it looks and it'll be easy for me to keep it this way. And then after this, I can go to the grocery store and pick up any necessary items that I uh, had to purge. Down there, I just keep the um, fire extinguisher and I've got my trash bags. I keep a couple of um, recipe books that I get from the grocery store there for quick ideas when I don't feel like going online. I usually keep my paper towels down here and extra water. And then here I've got 
that's my popcorn basket. I eat lots of popcorn. Whether I'm popping it myself or whether I am um, putting it in the microwave, and I know that's not the best way. I know that microwave popcorn is not that great for you. The quid is the one that I usually eat. It is organic. But I love popcorn. That is my snack of choice. I got a little Swiss Miss back there for hot chocolate. And I've got some rices back there. I've got some uh, uh, five grain rice. That's my jasmine tea that I get from, um, that's the Trader Joe's brand. My stock, as you can tell, I love quinoa. <laughs> and then that's the ginger tea. Uh, when I want a quick ginger tea, I usually make my ginger tea from actual ginger. I actually peel it and cook it. I love steel cut oatmeal. Uh, the blueberries and cranberry and grits. A couple jars of gravy. I've got my honey that I put in my tea at night. And I've got some peanut oil, which is what I cook with. I got some Pellegrino for dinner, some salad dressings, some sauces, some peanut butter, some more water that um, will be put into the refrigerator when we get low. Um, I add additional craisins uh, to my oatmeal sometimes. Um, and then I have some seasoning mixes in here. I have some uh, truffle sauce, some, some lemon and herb, E-V-O-O, -O, and some buffalo sauce. And then up here, I purged a lot of my um, canned goods. So I don't have very many. I will have to go back and get some more. And I put them where the oldest is on the bottom, the newest is on the top, so that I can replace them accordingly. And then we got some snacks, things here that you may want to eat uh, if you're in the mood for something uh, sweet. And then over here is the rest of my canned goods, mostly soup. Here I have um, some coffee and I've got some organic flax seeds. I've got some uh, water, some soda, and tea. That's pretty much what we drink. Um, the bread in the bread box. And again, I gotta get a basket for my chips because the basket that I purchased for them was too small. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, and then up here at the top, I have some cereal in the container here. That's in the container here. That's cereal. Um, then the next ones are pasta up above. Uh, those are the spiral pastas. Up above there, up above the top is um, breadcrumbs. And then I've got some spaghetti. I've got some uh, cavatavi and some bow tie pasta. Up here, I have some more cereal, and I have some pistachios. And then in these two containers here on the side, as I said earlier, those I will be putting my um, meal prep containers. And things that I don't necessarily want out, but need contained. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed my pantry, clean with me, storage and organization redo. It was much needed as you saw, and I love the way that it looks now.
and I am going to update this pot and make it look like the one from House for a lot less. So as, you, as I said earlier, this cylinder planter pot I got from Hobby Lobby. It was originally $12.99 and I got it for 50% off. I also picked up some folk art white chalk paint that I'm going to use to stencil with. I picked up an actual stencil. It, it, it looks to me more like an Aztec type print. Um, so I'm going to choose the two that I want to place on the bottom of my pot. And I also picked up some foam pouncers to do my stenciling with. And then inside I am going to use a, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure what kind of plant this is supposed to be. I don't know. I want to say palm because of this here at the bottom, but I'm not certain. And then, of course, I'm going to use some white rocks in the top. I'm going to cover that. I would use press and seal to cover this off, but I don't have any. So I'm going to use this foil to make it happen. So that's the portion that I intend to use right there. Now I'm going to add some styrofoam in here so that I don't have to fill this whole pot with rocks.
And for this DIY project, I'm going to use a fall sign that I got from the Target dollar spot. I'm going to pop off that element and repaint it white. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use spray paint or whether I wanted to use chalk paint. I decided I'm going to use spray paint and I got this from Home Depot. I'm going to be using some burlap ribbon and I got this from Michaels. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this garland wreath or not, but I might. And this came from Hobby Lobby and I got the wooden letters Joy and those came from Hobby Lobby. So now I'm going to pop off this apple element and paint the sign. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm back from painting this Target Dollar Spot fall frame. I'm going to run some burlap ribbon here down the center and crossways to make it look like a gift. Fold that back just a little bit, just to give me a neater edge. I apologize for the wind chimes that you hear going on in the background. It's a blustery day today. It's sunny, but slightly blustery. I decided to use the wreath. It's really garland, but I'm using it as a wreath as opposed to the O. Because I like how the green is picking up the uh, green on the edges of my burlap ribbon. I like that. So we're gonna take the kitchen table out into the garage. We're going to sand it, we're going to stain it, and then we're gonna put a couple coats of polyurethane on it. Would you ever consider restaining your kitchen table? Or would you just replace it? Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd also appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up. So here my husband is putting the sander together so we can get started sanding up with a 220 grit sandpaper for a light sanding. We're not trying to take it down to bare wood. We're just taking the sheen. It's a semi-gloss sheen off the top of the table and restain it. I've got the leaf here in the center. We're going to uh, stain that as well. As you can see, it's, it's worn. I've had this table for quite a while. This is probably the last step prior to replacing it. It's a beautiful uh, mahogany colored table, but we're going to change it to a Kona table because I recently changed the chairs on this table. So I am going to match the actual table to the chairs. As you can see, this scratch here just happened today. That hurts, but we're going to sand that out. But it's worn. It's seen a lot of meals and a lot of DIY projects and a lot of homework. We're just gonna refresh this kitchen table 
and make it look nice. Make it match the new chairs. So we put a drop cloth down and we raise the table up on some um, old paint cans because I think it'll be just a little easier to get to the legs this way. Okay, so we've got all the sanding done. So let's get ready to stain. I'm going to do a second polyurethane coat with no stain, just for added protection when you sit something hot on the table or a drinking glass, which we do often. So the first coat is complete. We're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna come back and hit it with a second coat. And then we're gonna do a polyurethane on top of that. So one down, two to go. Okay guys, this is day two. We've got two coats of Kona colored stain and uh, it's looking fantastic. I love the way it looks. It took very well. I'm going to add a coat of clear water-based polyurethane. I really like the way it came out. It's very pretty. We did just a few touch-up areas and added our first coat of polyurethane. It is a clear water-based polyurethane. You're able to put on a coat every 30 minutes. This is coat number one. We are thinking we're going to do about three or four coats. We'll see because the actual stain had polyurethane in it as well. So we may end up just doing maybe three. We'll see. It's looking good. Okay guys, so this is it. We've done our final sanding and this is our fourth coat. This is our final coat and uh, so far, so good. Despite a few hiccups along the way, it has turned out really well and I'm very happy that we did it. I really like the way this table turned out. I think it's beautiful. There will definitely be a sense of pride along with any meal that I sit down and eat here.
So these are the ingredients that I will be using today to make my own homemade reed diffuser. I have essential oils that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, they are a fall and winter scent. Um, I will be using a combination of vanilla, cinnamon, cranberry, and a little bit of spice, along with my Pyrex dish, bamboo skewers, or actual reed diffusers that I do have, and a jar to house your essential oils. Now let's get straight into the diffuser recipe. Creating a homemade reed diffuser for the holidays is incredibly easy. You really only need three ingredients. You need a carrier oil, and I'm gonna be using almond oil, 100% organic almond oil. You'll need rubbing alcohol or vodka. The alcohol acts as a binding agent between the carrier oil, the almond oil in my case, and the essential oils. And the essential oils of choice. You need a quarter cup of almond oil, you need two tablespoons of alcohol, you need about 20 to 30 drops of essential oils, And then you stir it up. And once we've got it all mixed together, we can pour it into the bottle. You can use pretty much any glass bottle that you like. Just make sure it has a narrow neck, which keeps the essential oils from evaporating too quickly. As you can see, the reeds have actual holes that run the length of the reed from top to bottom, which allows for the essential oils to travel up those tunnels and permeate your room. But if you don't have a reed diffuser and all you have is skewers, they work too. They just don't work as well as the actual reeds. Mmm, that smells so good. Recently, I had the opportunity to get some floating shelves hung in my bathrooms in the um, guest bathroom in the foyer. The shelves are forever changing because, because you can get instant gratification by moving one item and placing another item you can change up a look really quick uh, whether it's for the season or because it's tuesday and i can walk past it and change it up again the way i have these shelves right now may not look this way in two weeks uh, <laughs> so uh, it's an ongoing process and it changes along with me and i think that's why i see it as a very creative and personal art form outlet All of the items here, I believe, came from either TJ Maxx or Home Goods as well. Um, the plant here, this one, I believe, came from TJ Maxx. And then the washcloths, again, all of these items were something that I already had. Uh, it was a set that I bought to refresh the bathroom that I split in half and put half the towels over here because I just wanted to cross pollinate the colors. I thought they matched the bathroom so perfectly. Um, the lantern is something that I've already had. I had it for a few years. I can't remember where I got it from. Um, you'll notice that the little box, the little box pictures that I have, I've got a couple of those. Those came from Home Goods. I believe this uh, Provence lavender candle came from TJ Maxx. The vase came from Home Goods. The candle holders came from Michaels. 
and this candle holder, everyone knows where that came from, the Dollar Tree. I got these coasters from the Dollar Tree and I decided I'd make a potted plant and I'd use this as my pot. I'm going to be using hot glue and E6000 because I do want it to be permanent. I already had this cactus. Uh, I am from the Southwest and I appreciate cacti and I thought this was absolutely beautiful. I got this from Hobby Lobby. Now I'm going to get a piece of paper and put under me because as you all know, I uh, am kind of messy when it comes to glue, so I'm just going to use this little piece of paper underneath to keep me from making too big of a mess. So here I'm just I'm just scoring the bottom end of the coasters so that they can sit a little uh, more flush. And I'm just taking the wooden doll and just scratching off some of the cork board on the back. And I'm not going to do the one on the very bottom, I'm just going to do the ones that will fit on the side. Hey guys, let's connect on social media, on Instagram and Pinterest at Creative Glam One. I'm going to leave additional photos to this video over there. Stop by and check me out and make sure you follow. just a little green. Cactuses usually are uh, very dry, so I don't want to make it too green, but I don't want it looking too dry either. Just a little variation of color I think will be perfect. And I'm not going to paint the dowels that I used for legs, but you can if you needed to. You could also paint the entire project white or whatever, you know, a paint technique or whatever you want it to do. Um, but I'm going to leave it like it is. Look at them. That is super cute and super easy.
let me share a little bit about what I have going on here. There's a lot here. I got the base and the top to my lantern from the Dollar Tree. I thought these were so cute and I thought they would make an awesome top and bottom. That's going to be the bottom and that's going to be the top of the lantern. So these came from Dollar Tree along with what I'm going to use as just like a little medallion on the top to kind of give it some dimension and not structure but to give it some to give it a little more dimension on the top. This also, this disc came from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to remove that rope though. And I should have a knob down here somewhere. This knob is something that I already had. I believe I got this from Target, but I'm not certain. I believe that came from Target, and I'm going to use it as the top of my lantern. It's going to look something like that. Um, I already have my beads, my uh, farmhouse wooden beads. I got these from Amazon, so I'm going to be using these for the feet of my lantern. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use this round disc on the top. I like the way that looks, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to use this round disc as the top of my lantern or if I wanted to use one of the rosettes that I purchased from Home Depot. Um, these rosettes were $1.68, I do believe. I don't remember what the knobs were at Target. I, it, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember what the price was. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with something like that or if I wanted to go with something like that. Um, I also, ha I'm going to be using these uh, square dolls for the legs. These dolls I got from um, Home Depot as well. And they were, and they were $2 each and they're 36 inches long. So I'm going to cut these in half. That's why I have my miter saw here to cut these uh, these square dowels down to size. Uh, I'm going to be using my glue gun and my E6000 because I do want it to be permanent. And what else do I have? Oh, and then I have these. I wanted to put a decorative, um, something decorative on the side. I'll show you when I get to it. I got these at Home Depot a while ago. I do not know how much I paid for them. I, I, it's just something that I had around from another project. And then I also from Home Depot got a piece of nautical rope. So this is about, uh, I believe it was a foot. And I had them cut me two pieces because I'm also going to use one for the second lantern. The first thing I'm going to do is take these wooden dowels and I'm going to cut them down the size using my miter saw. Let's go. So I've got my wooden dolls that are going to be the sides to my lantern cut. Now I'm going to glue each of these dolls into the corners. I had at one point considered covering up the stars that were here, but I think that would be kind of pretty when you have a candle and you know having the glow of the light kind of peek through there, especially if I'm going to be using them outside on my deck in the evening time. I think that would be a pretty idea. I think I think that's going to be cute. All right, on to gluing. So I'm going to drop some glue right here in the corner, and because I want these to be permanent, I'm going to use the E6000. I'm using a generous amount and again I cut my dolls, my square wooden dolls to about 18 inches uh, each. I'm going to add some more glue. And now I have the base.
I like the way that looks. That's looking really good. I like it. So far, so good. So what I'm thinking is that I would do I go in here like that. And the reason that I'm putting them on here on the ends is because I thought that this is the way you'd go. And I don't want to block that off because that's what's going to give you access to the inside of the lantern. And then I'll do again the same thing with the other, with what's oozing out of the cap. I'm gonna add a generous bead on this side too. And I think that the round piece will go better because the knob is round. I think that's why I'm leaning towards the round wooden disc. All right, so this is the front. So I took my nautical rope and I added some uh, duct tape on both ends to keep it from unraveling. And then I wanted something kind of shiny that looked like metal. I don't have any flashing or anything like, thing like that to use, but I thought I could use some aluminum foil to give me that look as though it's a metal bracket on each end. And then I'll hot glue it on. I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue and use this as well. In the mornings, out here on my deck is usually where I have my coffee. I have a magnolia tree in my backyard. So for the past week or so, I've been watching my magnolia tree bloom. I think it's beautiful. So just like the previous uh, uh, lantern, I will be using two items from the Dollar Tree for the base and for the top. I will be popping this little piece out like I did on this one uh, so that the candle or florals can fit inside. I will also be removing the back off of this, uh, the picture hanger, in just a minute. I got a piece of nautical rope and I got that from Home Depot just like before. I you saw me earlier cut the uh, wooden dolls, the square wooden dolls, into 18 inches. So they're going to be relatively the same height, just two different styles. I think that's cute. I kind of like that. Or I could be a rebel about it, as I did before, and do that one. But I'm not feeling that as much as I was on the other one. I, I think I like that much better. So here I'm just going to remove the hanger. I also sanded this a little bit. This will be the top. So I figure it'll take the paint. I could not get the stickers off. These stickers just would not come off. So I sanded them down so that I can put my uh, decorative piece on the top of the lantern. So this is the top and this will be the bottom. But I'm gonna pop this out.
So I'm going to take these outside now and paint. I'll be right back. And when I looked at the price for $150, I knew I could make it for less than that. Luckily, all the components that I need to recreate this tray, I already had. So I'm going to take these wooden beads outside and paint them. And then I'm going to use E6000 to glue those onto the bottom because I do want them to be permanent. But for the gold handles, I am going to use hot glue because I do not want them to be permanent. So let's get started. So as you can see, I took the beads outside. I painted them gold. I tried to get them to match the handles as much as possible. I think I got sort of close. And I think I'm going to put those on first. And as I said earlier, I got this marble tile from um, Home Depot. I got it back in January. As I said earlier, I was considering making a marble tray and I had put it off. So I thought this is the perfect time to recreate this marble tray. And you'll also see it featured again in an upcoming video. So this is the back side of the tile, which is still kind of pretty huh? I always work on a paper tile surface when I use glue because I'm just not very neat. I see some of you all out there just working with your glue guns and your E6000 and you never spill a drop. I always spill mine. So. <laughs> Keep you in my heart, and my heart is where you are. I still think of you, I want you coming back. I remember when we were staring at a photo. Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes. And I keep you in my heart, and my heart is where you are. I still think of you, I want you coming back. Call me when you want, maybe I can take. Okay, so I gotta let those dry for a moment and I'll be right back. Okay, so now the feet are on and dried. And now I'm trying to decide if I wanted to embellish a little bit with some, I had some gold washi tape that I thought would go really well. So I'm just going to run a strip around all four sides.
Keep you in my heart, and my heart is where you are. I still think of you, I want you coming back. I remember when we were staring at a photo. Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes. And I keep you in my heart, and my heart is where you are. I still think of you, I want you coming back. Call me when you want, baby, can take. And again, these are just decorative. I will not be lifting the tray by these at all. When I find the ones that I want, there were some that were leaf shaped that I really want. So um, when I find those, I'll actually put those on with E6000. And hopefully I'll have that done before um, the next video that will feature this as well. I'm going to use some of these felt pads to protect my furniture because it looked as though some of that gold paint was coming off of the wooden feet that I painted gold. I love the gold washi tape that I added on the on the sides. I think it's really pretty. I considered using my um, oil-based paint, my Sharpie pen, to trace around the sides to give me that extra pop. And then I ran across the washi tape and I decided to use that instead. And I like it. So today I'm going to be using this 10 inch embroidery hoop to make my wreath. This is going to be the base. I got this embroidery hoop, I believe, from Joanne Crafts a long time ago. I do not know how much I paid for it, and I'm sure I had a coupon. These are the one inch sliced in half. I got these from um, Amazon uh, a little while ago when I got my other wooden beads that I made my wooden garland with. Um, I'll link that video up above. So I got those all at about the same time. It was a little while ago. But I'm going to use these today to decorate the hoop. And I'm going to be using these flowers here. And um, as usual, my flowers usually come from Joanne Crafts or Michaels. And these came from Joanne. These came from Joanne Crafts. And these came from Michaels. And I'm probably going to, I, I'm considering 
putting a bird in the center and this is a hummingbird and I got this hummingbird from Joy and Crafts and I'm gonna have to put some paper underneath me because again I am not the neatest person with glue I tend to make a mess since we're all stuck in the house and we're bored to death I am currently uh, creating my DIYs and my home decor from my stash and shopping my home uh, it's lots of fun but I do miss being outside some I am um, Never thought that I'd miss exercise as much as I do, but I do. I'm a little bummed over the fact that had I known this, I probably would have been able to get some big projects done. Uh, I guess it worked out for my husband because had I known, I'd have, you know, got some big projects taken care of. I'd have got some things painted. I'd have got some things stripped. I really would have taken advantage of this time better than I am. Anywho. Okay, so I'm going to take these beads all the way to almost to the bottom but not quite to the bottom because I'm not going to waste beads that are going to be hidden underneath the uh, flowers so the flowers are going to come out to a certain point and I'm going to take I'm going to take the beads to meet the flowers I don't necessarily want to waste beads that's going to be sitting under the flowers Now it's time to add the flowers. I love these picks. I really enjoy the picks at Joanne Fabrics. C crafts, rather. I'm gonna take and put a generous amount of hot glue. I'm just gonna take a little uh, floral wire for a little, a little added stain power. Don't remember where I got this face from. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's probably Home Goods I got this from. Um, I used it uh, in the winter for a winter centerpiece, but I'm gonna remove all the winter decor and repurpose this for spring. I'm also going to be using some, um, I think I might be using this mirrored uh, contact paper also. Um, I'm not sure yet. I will be using the marble contact paper. I got these on uh, Amazon. I'll link them down below in the description box. Um, if I use the silver contact paper, I'm going to be using them inside these jars here. Uh, these are something that I already had. I got these from Michaels. Uh, I'm gonna be using for the base of these jars, I'm gonna be using the little champagne cups that I got from um, I got these from the Dollar Tree the little champagne cups from the Dollar Tree uh, with the silver on the tips I'm also going to be using some sand in the bottle uh, bottom I'm gonna be using sand in the bottom of the champagne cups that I got from the Dollar Tree um, it gives me that white look but it also helps to weigh them down because these are relatively light I'll be using Gorilla Glue to attach uh, the two, the tops and bottoms together uh, because I do not believe they can rotate. I don't believe they can handle hot glue. And then I found these uh, rhinestone uh, bling stickers. I found the bling stickers at Michael's and I thought they sort of mimicked the bottom of this. So I'm thinking of blinging these out to kind of mirror what's happening on the larger base. 
And the tulips I got from Michael's. They were on sale. These were $1.99 each and they were 50% off. So basically a dollar a bunch. Now I'm going to take my bling stickers and then I'm going to attach them. I'm going to attach a row around the bottom. Trying to decide how much space do I want in between, even though over there it looks like there's no space in between. Okay, so now I've got the stickers put on both jars. I started spacing the rhinestones on this one, 
but I looked at the vase that I'm mimicking and realized they were closer together. So I did this one closer together and I think I like this way better, but I couldn't get them off. So one's gonna have a little space in between and the other won't. I'll see which one I like the best. So now onto the next step. I'm gonna add um, the contact paper inside of these. Now that I've got the paper cut, I'm going to peel the backing off of one of these contact papers. And again, the reason I'm going through all of this is because I do want it to be temporary. Because I'm sure I will be changing it out again come summer. And again, this whole theme and idea comes from the larger one. So let me do the larger one now. So you can see where I'm going with this. So I get that marble, so I can get that marble glass look. I think that's really pretty. Again, I like when glass is painted on the inside as opposed to the outside, and I think that's beautiful. Can't add the flowers just yet. We haven't finished these yet. Now I'm gonna fill these plastic champagne cups with sand. It's gonna to help to weigh them down, and it's also gonna give me that white look in between that I want down inside without having to use paint. I have some sand left over from another project, so I'm going to use that. And then that will go on top of it just like that. That's perfect. I just need a little more sand though. This is where the Gorilla Super Glue is going to come in because, uh, again, these are plastic and I don't think that they can take that temperature from the hot glue gun. So this is the, uh, the Gorilla Super Glue. It bonds really quickly and it lasts. And I've added tulips. Again, I got these tulips from Michaels. I was gonna go with peonies, and as much as I love peonies, they really don't go with the decor in my kitchen. Um, so I decided I'd go with the tulips because then I can get a more a, a variety of colors.
And then I think I'm probably just going to add a little blue. That's a wrap. I hope you all enjoyed my spring DIY kitchen countertop centerpiece. This is a wreath that I DIY'd some time ago. I am going to recycle this wreath and update it for this holiday season. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link it up above in the cards. So I'm going to take off the items that I had hot glued on and I'm going to add a new ornament. I enjoyed doing wreaths and I have to say this was probably one of my favorite ones that I've done. I love the fact that it's pretty forgiving considering what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing surgery on this wreath. I ordered a special holiday ornament for this wreath from Amazon, uh, but it said that the order was delayed and I don't know when I'm going to get it. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and go with plan B to finish this video. I'm going to use some Christmas picks. So I'm going to put one about right there and about right there. I got the picks from Joanne Crafts. I am not going to use hot glue. I'm going to use floral wire because I see myself changing this out uh, until the other Amazon order comes in, whenever that is. Now I've got that secured on there. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. And then as I said, I'm going to add my little uh, snowflake um, that I got from Joanne Crafts. And I'm more than likely gonna put that right in the center. You can give the elves a break. You can make I'm gonna create a winter village on my bookshelf in my office. This first layer here is to give a snowy effect. So I want it to be kind of high in the back. I love the way it turned out. And I also like where I placed it this year. I did a big tabletop one before. I will link that video up above in case you missed it. I like the location of this village. It's much smaller and a lot easier to handle. Would you guys consider doing a winter village in your decor? In today's video, I'm going to share with you a Restoration Hardware Vessel Dupe. If you're like me, I've been hearing about Restoration Hardware for the last couple years now. And it is on fire and all over the internet. So I decided I'd like to try my hand at DIYing one of those Restoration Hardware Vessels. I have three vases uh, that I've already owned. They are terracotta. I love the shape and I love the texture, but I'm not happy about the color. Um, so I don't necessarily want to completely cover it up as much as I just want to change the color. I want to give them a chalk paint finish and this one is called Primitive. And I got this from Home Depot. And then I want to give you another look. I have another vessel that I already own and I'm going to try a separate technique on that. But we'll talk about that later. I think I also may go in and add just for a little depth of color, maybe. We'll see. I might like it as just as it is, but I might want to go in and do a dry brush of yesteryear. We'll see. So I am going to use my pouncer and I am going to pounce some uh, primitive all over all three bases. 
and let's see what we come up with and see if I need to take it any further than that. I've been researching online how to make um, your vessel look more like a terracotta clay pot. And um, I saw lots of fantastic videos out there about how to make your own chalk paint using baking powder and acrylic paint. Now I saw this done with a pouncer as I'm doing and I also saw it done with a uh, stippling uh, motion that you would do with a paintbrush. I like that you guys. I like that a lot. As you can see this one here is a pretty quick process and I like that. As I said earlier, I've had these vases for some time now. Um, I don't know where I got them from. I, I more than likely got them from Home Goods. Vase number three. I can't wait to see what they look like when they're dry. All done. I got primitive on all three bases. I'm gonna let that dry and I'll be right back. Now for the second look, I'm gonna use a different technique. I will be using spackle, which comes pink and dries white. And the restoration hardware inspiration for this vessel is this look. And it's going to give me a really deep, natural stone look. That's what I'm going for on this vessel. Um, this vessel is, um, I think it's wood. And I know I got this from Home Goods. Um, I liked it at the time, <laughs> but I'm over it. So I want to keep the vessel because, again, I love the shape. Just don't, just don't love the color. So I'm going to turn this and this wooden vessel into a stone, a faux stone look. So I'm going to take spackle and just cover it. And I think I got to work relatively quick. Feels like cake icing. That's about the, the texture of this. It's like cake icing. Move quickly. Don't try to change my mind. In fact, honey, I've already packed all my stuff. We're no longer kids. Let's move on. I love those looks. That's not necessarily the look of my entire home, but I can uh, incorporate a little bit of that restoration hardware look areas of my home. And I do mean just the look, <laughs> because these vessels are quite expensive. And um, I saw a, a lot of that look at Home Goods. So I thought I'd add a couple of these pieces to my home. I might even pick up one or two. I'm gonna make sure I've got coverage too. So texture and coverage is the goal at this point. And then once it dries, I am going to hit it with the stone paint, with the um, the Rust-Oleum stone textured paint. You make sure you put it down inside the neck of the vase of the vessel as well, so that uh, when you add your greenery, or if you don't add any greenery, it looks like um, you got complete coverage. All right, guys. So I'm gonna let this dry, and I'm probably gonna let this one dry overnight. Then tomorrow, I'll come back, I'll spray paint it with the textured stone paint.
Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy my version of a restoration hardware vessel dupe. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I DIY a tabletop fire bowl featuring citronella fire glass. We're enjoying our deck all hours of the day, but towards the evening time as the sun starts to set and those little critters starts to come out, this tabletop fire bowl with citronella fire glass is the perfect addition to your patio and deck decor. It's beautiful to look at because of the glow of the fire and it's functional because of the citronella fire glass. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. Hit it twice so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Leave me a comment. Would you use a tabletop fire bowl in your backyard? I'd also appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up. This is a terracotta pot that I got from Hobby Lobby and I paid $9.99 for it. And then I spray painted it gray, uh, a, a matte gray almost like a primer gray because I wanted that stone look and I love the way it turned out. Okay now the first thing I'm going to do is take this Traeger bucket liner. It's used for your barbecue grills but I thought this would be a perfect place for me to use it in the fire bowl because it will lend itself to, well, let me take the paper off, but it's oh, it acts as like a little cage for the actual fire bowl so when the canister when my uh, when my canister runs out all I have to do is take it out of here to replace it put a new one in take the old one out to keep the rocks from falling into the bucket I'm gonna cover it with a little chicken wire so I got this chicken wire at Michaels and I believe it was $2.99 for this roll so I'm just gonna double it up I think that's going to work really well. It's all centered just enough to make the holes within the chicken wire not so large. But I am going to go around and trim it off just a little more because I think it's a little longer. It's a little bigger than it should be. So I'm going to trim it some. These Real Flames fireplace fuel gels are uh, really cool. Um, I like working with them, but they are very dangerous. They are, um, so if you're going to be using it on a patio or on a deck or near uh, fabrics or cushions and things like that, um, this is just what is a PSA as you can say, just be careful. Fireplace fuel canisters are very flammable, highly flammable, so never leave them unattended. So I'm going to open this one. That's what they look like inside. They look like jello. Now I'm gonna sit the top back on there temporarily. And then I'm going to cover this. I got these white rocks from Michaels. Um, I believe they were $7.99 a canister. I went with the ones from Michaels as opposed to the ones from Dollar Tree because the ones at Dollar Tree are a smaller stone. I like them, but I thought that they may fall through the chicken wire and I didn't want that. I wanted a larger piece that I knew wouldn't 
wouldn't be such a problem when it came time to change out uh, the canister. But then I decided after I had purchased these that I really wanted to go with the fire glass, the citronella fire glass in a blue color. So it can not only be pretty, but it can also be functional in keeping the mosquitoes away. And I would use these rocks in the bottom as a filler. And then I don't have to use so much of the fire glass. Now you can purchase these online or at Costco's or places like that. I think even Amazon. Or you can do like I did and DIY your own. I'm going to move the chicken wire out of the way just a little bit to take the canister lid off. Oh, I love the blue. I'll put the chicken wire back over the top and then I can add the rest of the rice. Trying to be careful not to put any of the rocks inside the jail. I couldn't decide whether to go with the river rock or whether to go with the fire glass. I'm glad I went with the fire glass. But don't get me wrong because the river rocks are just as pretty. I love the way this fire bowl turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And that Centronella fire glass lends a sparkle that you just can't beat. I hope you enjoyed this video and how I DIY my tabletop fire bowl. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know which DIY was your favorite. I have left a couple links at the end of this video if you'd like to see more home decor by Creative Glam. Now is the time to check my description box and follow the link. And with that being said, happy holidays. And I'll see you right back here next time on Creative Glam. Bye.